lovely people my name is Emma and today I'm filming my June wrap up. Now I've decided to go for a comfy seat today rather than standing in front of my bookshelves so do forgive the slightly boring background. During the month of June I read nine books, one was a reread and eight were brand new. There's kind of a mix of fiction and non-fiction and I'm just going to go in chronological order of what I read first to what I read last. So the first book I finished was uh, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. This I listened to mainly on audiobook and it is a non-fiction science slash history book that is looking at the life of Henrietta Lacks. Henrietta's uh, cancer cells were taken without her consent when she was still alive and then were used after her death in a series of experiments and she is the first example of an immortal cell that can be then used and replicated like the cells in the petri dish just never die, they just kind of keep re replicating as long as they have kind of fuel and they end up basically being used in every kind of scientific development in the past sort of 50 years or so. This is a story of the uh, advancements of cell science and what that kind of means in terms of medical advancements etc etc but also a, hi a history of Henrietta and her family and their interactions with both the scientific community and the press because Henrietta Lacks was a black woman and there is a long history of black people especially in America being used against their consent in a variety of different ways connected to medicine and science. Rebecca Sloot gets very heavily involved with the family so her personal journey is is also included in this book. She's a very present narrator. It's the kind of book that was really really emotional and very enjoyable. It's incredibly well known in pop science. A lot of people have raved about it and I can totally see why and it definitely um, was very popular when it was first published. It now is quite old. I believe it was published in the like mid 2000s. So I really enjoyed it as a reading experience. I think it's a great book if you like history of science. For me personally I'm not as big a fan of when an author gets heavily involved with her subject matter. I can see why Rebecca did what she did with this book because really her journey with um, Rebecca, Rebecca, Henrietta Lacks' family was kind of a core part of it but I do prefer my narrator to be a little bit more removed but it was deeply deeply interesting um, and the science was really really fascinating as well. The next book I finished was the end of a trilogy and that is Defy the Fates. This is book three of the Constellation trilogy, it's a YA sci-fi romance and I won't talk too much about this one because I don't want to spoil anything. But I will say that I really enjoyed the trilogy as a whole. I think that this one ended incredibly strongly. I liked the threads that it was pulling through. It had the same kind of questions as book one and book two about what does it mean to be a person compared to what does it mean to be a human and I really liked the way it ended. The trilogy as a whole is set in a kind of epic galactic battle between Earth which have heavily embraced artificial intelligence and robots and uses them a lot in uh, in sort of various planets and sort of um, their worlds in general and then this particular planet that is def I think it's called Genesis that is desperately trying to hold off from basically an earth invasion and they shun a lot of artificial intelligence programs and it is about a soldier from Genesis and an artificial intelligence program that might be more human than robot that meet at the beginning of this war and it's about their kind of relationship developing and then trying to bring this war down and finally finish it. Um, really, really cool, really interesting and would heavily recommend. Also a fairly fast paced read and unlike a lot of sci-fi, actually a manageable and respectable length. So love the trilogy, so pleased to finish it. The next book I finished is uh, Life is a Unicorn by Amru al Kadi. This is a memoir from Amru. It's non-binary and is also a drag queen and it kind of charts Amru's sort of experiences very early on in childhood going through to sort of discovering their identity and their exploration with drag and sort of um, coming out in general. It's a real lovely look at a combination of um, kind of uh, homophobia identity fitting in but it also has a really intense look at Amru's OCD that definitely manifested itself mainly through um, a real obsession over grades and schooling and um, always being correct and always doing the most that they could in school and I found that particularly fascinating. Amru actually ended up going to University of Cambridge which was where I went and some of the conversations that he had about his real fixation was something which I definitely recognised on a much lower scale with some of my kind of colleagues and sort of people in my year. So it was a really interesting look at sort of a, a socially acceptable version of OCD. Um, because of the connection with the university, it was very nostalgic in places for me, but it was also incredibly raw and emotional and opened up a whole world that I know nothing about, obviously with um, him being non-binary, also him coming out as gay, his early experiences exploring his sexuality and also kind of his connection with the drag community. Um, 
I personally found his tone really good. He's incredibly bitchy. Sorry, they. They are incredibly bitchy and um, I really enjoyed the way that they commented on things. They're also very entitled in places. Amory comes from or came from wealth for a period of time um, and that was one which they didn't particularly acknowledge very well. But other than that, I thought that they were incredibly self-aware and I really liked their kind of tone in general. I also listened to this one on audiobook. It is narrated by Amory. I would totally recommend that one. I think it's fantastic. And their drag troupe is called Denim. They have a great song. Go check it out. The music video is fantastic. And you can see Amru in all their glory. The next book I finished is book two of Blood Bowl. This is the Blood Bowl omnibus that has four books in it. I read book two, which I believe is called Dead Bowl, I think. This is by Matt Forbeck. And it's actually based in the world of kind of Warhammer slash Blood Bowl, which is a little bit like Lord of the Rings meets um, American football. But in this one in particular, there it actually meets football or soccer to our American friends. Um, and in this one, the, the group, that we sort of met in book one have been kicked out of their league and um, most of their players have died because uh, Blood Bowl is incredibly vicious and incredibly brutal and many players die on the pitch. So they go to try and compete in the Far Albion or FA Cup, um, off in Albion, where they um, are trying to find a particular cursed chalice, I think it is, that will then mean that they're unbeatable. But their team gets joined by various undead players, including David Deckham, and they uh, kind of hilarity continues from there. At one point they fight a guy called Fergus Alexson. If you know nothing about British football, this is gonna be going straight over your head, but this is a lot of <laughs> references to various British football players, managers, etc., etc., especially within the time period this was written. Um, this was not the strongest of the two <laughs> so far. It is definitely a dip in quality, but I had a good time. It was entertaining enough, and I definitely do want to continue with the series because I have heard book three and book four do pull it up a notch. Weirdly, I don't remember anything about this one, even though in theory I read book one, two, and three when I was a teenager. So apparently I've just blanked this one from my memory because it really was not very strong. But it was good enough that I didn't hate it and I was happy to continue. And it is a kind of really silly, whimsical, ridiculous book that you just kind of have to be along for the ride. The plot makes no sense, but that's okay. The next book I finished is another non-fiction and that's Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell. This um, talks about George Orwell's times being homeless, both in Paris and in London, and his experiences with extreme poverty, kind of bouncing from safe houses and various shelters like that, as well as actually living on the streets, trying to pick up work here or there. George Orwell has a wonderful turn of phrase. I really enjoy all of his writing, especially his non-fiction. This is the third non-fiction of his that I've read. They tend to be both a combination of memoir and political in nature, and this one is very much fitting in with that. He does have a conversation about how he feels that society should deal with extreme poverty and the homeless, um, as well as various, uh, in some cases incredibly dated, in some cases incredibly relevant, political views on his fellow homeless people in general. As with a lot of his work, he had some really great observational humour and some real wonderful attention to detail, but it did just kind of peter out and go nowhere. He just sort of ends his books without them really doing anything in particular. You almost think, especially with the size of them, that if you could kind of combine some of the, the ones he's done, they could almost be like volumes of one bigger sort of opus of his life. Um, but I still really enjoyed it. And like I say, I just, I love George Orwell's writing style. I've said it before, but I would like read a shopping list if he wrote it. I just think he has the most incredible turn of phrase and like skill at crafting sentences. So I really, really just enjoyed the reading experience in general. Then I read The Huntress by Kate Quinn and this was a total surprise out of nowhere that I absolutely adored. Like potentially one of my new favourite historical fiction authors ever. Um, Kate Quinn definitely writes a lot of stuff in World War II and this one focuses on a particular woman called the Huntress who was a Nazi and is wanted for various Nazi war crimes. It follows her fleeing Germany and where she ends up going. It also follows a gentleman who is desperate to try and track her down because she killed his brother. And then also a Russian pilot who was part of the only all women um, pilot force in Russia, um, potentially of the war in general, who also wants to track down the Huntress because she has a score to settle. And it's about the various threads of their stories coming together. It was fairly hefty compared to a lot of historical fiction. It comes in at like 500 plus pages because it really gives plenty of time to explore all these kind of three different main threads and characters, their backstories, a lot of stuff to do with the war you spend a lot of time with. I think her name was Nina, um, the pilot getting to hang out with her in her pilot training and her youth. You, It is a real, real kind of slow burn, but it's all about kind of building that tension and building that real like 
the pace kind of increases increases and building the momentum as they get closer and closer to the huntress i loved it i am a bit of a basic bitch i do love world war ii i'm gonna have an entire video dedicated to world war ii books coming out fairly soon um so for me this was just like a no-brainer was so good the first 50 pages took me a little bit to get into it and then i was hooked and i just sat and blitzed it in a day and yeah was so surprised at just how much it really gripped me um, and just how quickly i blitzed this 500 page book so i think this is going to be similar to in some ways to, like minette waltz's in terms of the real like character work that kate quinn does and yeah i've got plenty of time for her definitely to check out more of her work if you like a real slow paced historical fiction she could be the one for you the next one i finished was a reread it was world war z by max brooks i listened to this on audiobook this is an oral history of a zombie apocalypse and i think it just is fantastic it deserves all the hype that it gets as a horror book and i really enjoyed my re-listen re i guess this is one of the first times i've ever, ever actually like re-listened to an audiobook and i really enjoyed diving back in with that because i kind of when i don't have the mental energy for a new audiobook or podcast i have a whole host of podcasts i kind of re-listen to episodes because i feel quite warm and cozy and it's kind of like people chatting in the background but i might actually start checking out re-listening to a few audiobooks that i really enjoyed because i think again i like rereading but i don't ever feel like i have much time for it just because i have so many unread books on my shelves whereas this might be a good compromise of when i don't have the mental space for a new book actually this could be a really good way of doing it rather than listening to your wrong about episodes for I think about the seventh time round for some of them just like Sarah Marshall and Michael Hobbs, what can I say? So anyway, World War Z, going back to the book. Um, so this is about a virus that causes a zombie outbreak and rather than following any one particular character or plot as such, it is a real macro look at like global politics and global sort of military maneuvers, science, etc, etc. How would we as a society cope with a zombie outbreak? I first listened to this last year towards kind of, I think a month or two into the pandemic and it felt really close to home it was a little bit nicer listening to it this time around now that we've kind of um hopefully maybe seeing the end of covid who knows maybe we'll look back on this video in a year and be like oh emma was so quaint who knows but it kind of had a slightly different vibe this time around and i just i really liked it i think max brooks is so on the money I love these macro looks. It's a full cast of um, narrators for the audiobook. I think it works so well and it's so cool. So definitely check it out. I think it's completely different to a lot of the zombie stuff that is out there. The next book I finished, I finally actually got to the end of. This has been two and a half months in the making and that is The Secret Life of Trees by Colin Tudge. This is a non-fiction about how trees live and why they matter and the first half of, well, first section of the book is talking about trees in general. What are they and their place in sort of um, the history of the planet and then the last section of it is really looking at like the various effects that they have in terms of like agroforestry climate change global warming etc etc the kind of place in our economy and then the middle section is just an unbelievable amount of data about different kinds of trees and that was where it really lost me i really enjoyed the front like the front end of it i really enjoyed the back end of it and i blitzed those kind of sections fairly quickly i think i read like this is sort of a 400 ish page book i think the first hundred and the last hundred pages i managed to get through both of them within, within about a week each it was just this middle section that was so bogged down with detail about different tree species that took me literally six weeks if not more to get through and i just did not care there would be the odd throwaway comment where i'd be like huh that's kind of a cool fact about that tree but it was all latin terms it was all just stuff that washed over my head it was just a sea of data that i couldn't do anything with and yeah it just really didn't work for me i think if you're somebody who has a stronger background in gardening in trees in general if you know more about plants you probably will quite like this one but i definitely preferred the kind of first hundred and last hundred pages and i'd say if you were kind of interested in reading this maybe skim the middle bit or maybe check out a different book on trees i'm not finished with wanting to read about trees i don't think this quite did what i wanted it to do in terms of like what i was interested in for a tree book so i'm curious about the hidden life of trees which is another one that's quite popular on booktube i can't remember the author i might check that out next instead because this just didn't quite work for me the final book I finished in the month of June is Playback by Raymond Chandler. Raymond Chandler is a classic crime writer from the 50s. He writes crime noir and this is the last book of his in the Philip Marlowe series but they are standalones. You can read them out of order so it's the fourth book of his I've read but this is the seventh book in the series so I've got three more I need to patch in and maybe a collection of short stories somewhere. Um, Philip Marlowe generally I 
I like the character of Philip Marlowe. I enjoy Raymond Chandler's writing. He has that real kind of dame and doll kind of style writing where each individual sentence will really packs a punch and Philip Marlowe as a character is just kind of jaded and embittered and angry at the world and is very happy to throw a punch and snatch a drink and make out with the, with the doll and it's just like, it's good fun. This one was not as good as the others of his, of his as the others of his I've read. Um, I think by this point he was kind of getting a bit sick of the character. It's noticeably shorter than the others. I think it's probably a good 50 to 100 pages shorter than the other ones of his I've read and the plot just didn't feel as tight and I just I kind of kept getting a bit lost in between but similar with George Orwell each individual sentence is so like well crafted and fun that I don't kind of mind the fact that the overall um, kind of package is a little bit lacklustre so it's not my favourite of his but it was still a really good reading experience. If you want to try and check him out I'd recommend his first one is The Big Sleep, it's the one that he's very well known for and I really also enjoyed The Long Goodbye. Those have probably been my kind of favourite reading experiences and I definitely do want to like fill in the gaps and finish off the rest of his. I think this might, might just be like the worst one because it's the final one and he clearly just wanted to let this character go. So that's it from me, those are all the books that I read in June. I've got a couple that I've finished off even though it's still fairly early in July and I've been really enjoying the reading that I've been doing so far. So let me know in the comments down below, have you read any of these? Do you agree with my thoughts on any of them at all? Um, yeah, everything, everything you want to chat about in the comments down below. Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!